some fiduciary responsibility associated with your case, then you're really starting a new process without really any justification. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I, I, I just... I was just curious that when I mentioned that to him, he said, well, and walked away. It's like there was something. He didn't say anything, and that's what got me. Because he told me first, there's no place you have to go with this. Well, we've, yeah, you see, we've had, uh, we've had people already have state troopers come to their home saying, if you send another deed poll, we're going to declare you incompetent and put you in prison, Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't say we're charging you. They just had the midnight knock at the door, with the full intimidation. Don't do any more. Now, what does that tell you? That tells me a lot. And then when they, when he tells you you have nowhere to go, as opposed to I'm going to charge you, or you're going to face another charge because what you've done is criminal. You're you're going to be charged, or in fact you are charged. What does that tell you, that nothing like that's happened? It's just said, you have nowhere to go. What does that tell you? Well, it's an answer without answering, basically. But Right. So have a look at, the, have a look at the, the biggest lies they're doing to stop EDPs that we've put up there on the, on the instruction, and I'm going to add more to it. But it's entirely up to you. Just, just understand that, and I don't, this guy, if he's spoken, he may not be a bad guy. Yeah, but the problem is there's no one is challenging the system and the system is absolutely uh, has to be stopped because it has nothing to do with the law. It's not doing anything to help our society and it's certainly not helping anyone, the victims of crime uh, or the innocent that are crushed up into the system. So it's up to you, Bob, what you do, but it's always interesting to hear this and I thank you for your feedback and um, have a think about the words. But I hope I answered your question about why we address the court relevant to the matter that is at hand to us, so that there's someone responsible who should be doing their duty that isn't. Yeah? Yes, that makes sense. And I agree they're just raping and pillaging everybody. So thank you, Frank. No, thank you. Good on you, Bob. See you. All right. Thank you, Bob. All right. uh, Next question we have from... uh Board man again. Let me. Board man, are you there? Hey Frank. Um, uh, excuse the background Hi. noise, but yeah, um, I heard you mention it before, and I'm going to ask you on it because from reading, you know, on the site information about the birth certificate, um, I know in North Carolina they have two. They have what they call the long copy, a static copy, and then they have the regular one they usually give people, which is the bank trust note, it's just a bond. Um, and, and using the Ecclesiastes Depot sitting. The shouldn't you use like the, the long copy, uh, and in doing so, see, correct me if I'm wrong, shouldn't that shut down all the execute trust and their other crap right then and there? Yeah, it will. It will shut it down. Um, if you can do it on long copy, great. If you can afford it, great. If you can get one, great. <clears throat> if you can't, it doesn't matter. It's just if you can get a long copy, and I know the ones you mean, absolutely fantastic. If you can't, so long as they send you an official document and it comes from the vital statistics, then that is your taxi cab to attach your EDP back to them. That's all it is. Yeah? Okay, great. Um, and also the, the gentleman was talking about the SS4 form. Uh, I've tried that, you know, trying to file for the number. Of course, I, I, you know, just downloaded it off the site the way you done, which is uh, almost the same, but there is some difference in it. Um, but they will, because uh, I've gotten it back, they will request for you to fill out who the responsible party and the social security number um, and file it. Um, some people have told me that it's just certain people, which one you get, they'll just go ahead and give you the account, you know, set up the account number, and then some, you know, want those two boxes filled. Yeah, you're dropping out a bit there. Can you send me an email on your experience there? And uh, I'll come back to you and, and, and certainly will. And this is important to get right for people. So any feedback you've got is terrific. And I encourage anyone that's got feedback on this to, to please send it through so we can get this right. Um, I do know of a number of people who have followed it straight and done it through um, postal rather than online and have got their EIN. So it is 
it, it, it is being done. But um, I can't say to you that I certainly we have all the question answered. We don't, and we need to improve it. So can you send me an email on your feedback there, and we can add that with the feedback we got from Ron as well, please? Yes, I'll definitely do it. And um, um, quickly, I know, I know you just want to answer a question to somebody else. Uh, let's say you do the depot on the birth certificate. Should you follow through with the with the regular steps of the dishonor and also too on, on doing that? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, go you go right the way through because oh. the the vital statistics um, are even more likely to lie than the courts. So absolutely, because you'll get responses back like we don't know what you're talking about, we don't have any trusts. Absolutely, you go the whole hog until they do the right thing. Okay, yep. and and then, and then any other issues you ever have dealing even with state taxes or even IRS, it, it uh, should automatically shut all that mess down immediately, shouldn't it? It'll it'll shut all of that down. It'll shut down taxes, state taxes. It'll shut down um, all the alphabet agencies. It shuts the whole thing down. And more importantly, it does not deny you any benefits. It just shuts shuts down the terrorism that they're doing against us. Okay. But then you have to use the new trust uh, number you get off the uh, SS4 to file right. in. The, okay. That's, That's right. right. You have to start using your new trust. And then, of course, what you want to do then is start conveying your property into the new trust, convey your truck convey your home, get everything across, and then you, there's nothing that they can claim anymore. Yeah? Gotcha, gotcha. And, and paycheck and everything when you're going for appointment and everything. Yeah. You, can I just say, um, you're very hard to hear the last bit, so um, I hope I answered those key questions. I look forward to your email, and look, thank you so much for the feedback. Great. Thank, thank you, Frank. All right, we have Cosmic Thoughts. On the line, are you there? Hey, hello. Hi. Hi. Oh, let me take off speaker. Sorry. Okay, uh, uh, Frank, this is Ryan. Uh, uh, I was actually Hi, the one who. Um, it's uh, and it's uh, thank you as always, <laughs> um, and thank you Terry for uh, asking the question. I was the one who asked the question about um, not having a new summons for the con- con- continuance from the court dates. Yep, but I, but I still have this original. I'm holding it in my hand right now, um, from back in September. This original citation. Um, I recall from when I uh, first started getting into these calls and and hearing you um, that you seem to stress. Um, this is a two part question. This is the first part that you seem to stress um, uh, some some importance on not defacing their their front half of the document now. Sure. This all happened way before I learned any of this stuff that I've learned from from all this, um, and it was folded up in folded up into into eights uh, in my in my back pocket for quite some time. So it's all folded up. It's got lines all over. It's got a little tiny spot of dirt. And actually, before once again, before I knew all this stuff about not defacing documents, I'd written some little note, I guess, like a phone number for something or something, and then scratched it out, like, way down at the bottom. It was outside the little line at the bottom. But um, do you think that that, uh, if I put my EDP on the back of, of this document, that they're going to, that they're likely to figure out a way to say, well, we don't have to honor your document because you put pen marks on ours, on our side of it? Well, <laughs> we know they're desperate for any reason not to to honour it, right? So, is this a what coloured paper is this, Ryan? Uh, it's white. Okay, get it's some printed out paper. in the in the in the ALE uh, agent's car uh, off of his little printer in his in his vehicle. Okay, cool. Get some get some liquid paper. Fix white anything out. like pen marks. Go down to to um, um, you know your FedEx um, Kinkos type thing. Get it photocopied, yeah. Okay, it's still going to have lines all over where the fold where the fold marks are, though. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. That's not you defacing it. That's just fold marks. That's not a defacement. That's just a, a that's just a, a, a feature of of how it was preserved. No, it's okay. So it's, a copy is just as good yeah. as the original. Of course it is. Of course it to is. Them. Okay. So so use white out and get rid of the pen marks that I put on the bottom, and. Um, yeah. 
and then use the, okay, and then use the copy, use a copy of that. Okay, the second. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Um, second question is, um, and I typed this in there up there too, but it was I had to type multiple parts, and Terry must not have caught that one. But I, I've already been um, to court over this. Obviously, uh, you know, if I've gotten continuances, that's obvious. But uh, when I've been both times to court over this, I have been with an attorney that I hired before I knew any of this stuff. Sure. And so I was talking to Yoda on Skype the other day, and he and he was saying that that might complicate things a little bit because since I've already been in with a member of the bar, that may indicate that I was incompetent before. And I was thinking that the the deed poll sort of is a is a you know clean slate scratch, like bringing attention to the fact that you didn't know any of this stuff before, type of thing. But I'm just curious sure. if the fact that I've already been with an attorney. Obviously, I have to fire my attorney or tell him that I don't need him or I can't afford him or whatever before issuing my EDP. Um, yeah. But I'm just curious about, you know, I tend to worry a little bit, and I at least at least want to cover my bases, and I want to, I just want to know if there's anything extra I need to take into account mentally or whatever um, because of the fact that I have been to court over this specific matter with an attorney twice. All right, Ryan. Do you feel more competent today than you've ever felt in terms of the law? Absolutely. And that's all that matters. Go forward. Okay? Do what you have to do with your lawyer. Move forward. We're asleep. We're awake. That's all that matters. They can use every trick in the book, and we'll deal with them. But that's all that matters, Ryan. You're awake. Okay. It, it was Yoda's response to the question that made me um, feel, the, feel an even more urgent need to ask because he said he, he said he thought that, that might, might complicate things, but to ask you. So. Yeah. No. No, it's, the only complication is that you are awake and you are competent and you are embracing and learning the law. That's what matters. And uh, the past is the past. And if they want to ask that question in court, you simply say, I was not not aware, Your Honour, of the complexity of your fraud. I am now. <laughs> well, a wording like that in court, uh, I would imagine, could easily be taken as contemptuous even though I have no feelings of contempt towards the court or anybody in it because I know that they've been lied to just as much as the rest of us. Sure, sure. But I was not aware I was not aware of my rights. I was not aware uh of of uh uh my uh my ability to withdraw my consent nor my options for remedy and I am now. Okay. All right. All right, so I'll leave it with that, Ryan. But if you have any more questions, you know, you can always email me and, and fire through, okay? That's excellent. Thank you, Frank. I really appreciate it, as always. That's all right, Ryan. Good on you. Thank you, Ryan. All right, <clears throat> next we have genetic memory back. Uh, gen genetic memory, are you there? Can you hear me now? Yes. Hi. Yes. Right. Right. Okay, great. Um, okay. You know, I had another question in mind, but the questions that have been asked before me have brought up this, which I think is more important, and that is that when people go to court, they don't want to basically go to trial, okay? You don't want to go to trial. You don't want to go through all those changes. Uh, and the the last gentleman, um, he's not going to be competent uh, just because he feels competent. When he gets to court, it doesn't matter how he feels. Uh, he's, if he contracts into the court, he's going to be contracted. Contracts are fluid. Now, what he could possibly do is give a, uh, offer a contract to his uh, lawyer, right? And basically that contract will uh, request that the lawyer divulge all the information and that the lawyer is working, and that the lawyer is working for him and not the court. That's conflict of interest, so the lawyer can't do that. All right. Um, the real basic thing is this, that when anybody goes to court and they come up to the bar and they go into the bar, they have just done that fluid contract thing. They've just made another contract saying that they submit to everything that's going to happen to them. Okay? <clears throat> yeah, I, that, I, can I, because you, because you made yes. a statement... I know you got a question. Hopefully, you got a question you want to ask me. But can I just add quickly? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. If we're talking about contracts, contracts. You. Sorry, we're getting back here. You, you, you know that the deed, the deed is a contract. Is it not? Is it not? That's correct. Okay. 
Okay. 